guru yoga on Pachadara, rest the mind in the mind. How to rest the mind in the natural state. Pachadara is a blue Buddha. Yes, uh, in your prayer booklet in the center, this, oh, that one, yes, yes, exactly, sorry, yeah, this one, <laughs> here, just page uh, 29, page 29, you can see the Vajradhara, this one, it's called Primordial, the Primordial Buddha, anyway, look at the page now, page 29, uh, this one is called Vajradhara. This will help you for your visualization. No, it's, uh, look, let's see, sitting on the, which first is the lotus, on the lotus is a moon disk, and then on the moon disk, Vajadar is sitting on the cross leg. Uh, two hands are joined at the heart, like this. On the left, is holding the Bell on the right holding the Vajra with the bell and the Vajra like this. So here bell the bell symbolizes the wisdom in this case. And the Vajra symbolizes the uh, compassion or method. So when it's cross here, this means Vajra is, is embodiment of the compassion and the wisdom. No, it's inseparable. So that's what is Vajra no. And the blue color of Vajra is a very deep, clear, profound color of this sky. Where there's no dust, no cloud, pristine, deep, profound. So that symbolizes the infinite, infinite nature of the wisdom. The profundity of the all the excellent qualities. <coughs> that what Vajadara what is symbolizes here. So these are, this is, uh, uh, every, everything they have, the significance. So it's an, it's an expression. These are all like expression of the enlightened qualities. You know? So that what Vajadara. So here first, see, when we do that, first we need to take refuge. Bodhicitta, as always, any practice we do. Uh, this is the first uh, uh, it express or it shows the our uh, purpose of this practice. What we want to do to this practice. So here the refuge and Bodhicitta is uh, cultivating that is to achieve the optimal goal. Not from somewhere outside, but to reveal your own the ultimate, you know, the reality nature of the mind. In the fullest, in the fullest way. Um, so that way it is here it's a precious Buddha of the three times. With the longing mind, I take refuge one bodily in you. So the, the, some, the, the translation has been a little bit uh, polished. You know? So you, if you find something little different, so basically it's not, the word is arrangement, make a little better, clear, like that. Anyway, here, so I, this is what the precious Buddha of the three times, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, 
only three times. With a walking mind, I take refuge one point one point in you. The longing is longing to free from samsara. Longing to see the total nature of Because we are tired of constantly changing. We achieved something, but then that changed. We got something, and that has changed. You know? So just repeating all the time, it's completely, completely you feel sometimes you feel you're tired, isn't it? Again and again, there's no final achievement. So to, to see that, so I don't want to see the final destination. So just that is written in our mind. We need to just prepare. This, for example, you see, it does it with you. When somebody asks the Buddha, say, who are you? It's, it's very scholar, you know, a scholar uh, who has a lot of knowledge in many aspects. Unfabricated, unpolluted, that nature. So from that awareness, see, Buddha sees all sentient beings because of the lack of that awareness. Session means a suffering. No. Session means a so polluted by their own contrived mind. No. So that awareness is nothing but wisdom and compassion. But there's compassion because from that ultimate awareness. Oh, yeah.
دکتر همچون چیزی خود بینفیت او ماتو سنش بین او وانتر این در سمتر ایسیمیشن این در کوالیتی این در فابر پیوریکیدن ستیت سا اجنریت and the supreme mind of enlightenment, Bodhicitta. So Buddha is the embodiment of Bodhicitta. So we need to first generate, cultivate, to bring in our heart. As yesterday I mentioned, for the benefit of all mother's nation beings. We need all mother's nation beings as a support to, to generate that mind. Without the nation beings, we cannot generate that mind. So, oh, for the benefit of this rock, I cultivate Pasida. We cannot say that. For the benefit of all the trees, I cultivate Pasida. We cannot do that. So we need this all the session brings for the support of our enlightenment, for our achievement of the Buddhahood. We say for the sake of the session beings. So I do this. Because of this, you see, since we need all session beings for our own to achieve ourselves. Like for example, in Sweden, you call president or prime minister. Prime minister. Prime minister, you see. He to become, he or she to become prime minister, you need all the Swedish people. You see. Without Swedish people, all the Swedish, he or she cannot become prime minister. Go to a jungle, say, I'm the prime minister. <laughs> Who will pay attention to that? You see. So now it's up to him or her to do things right. You see. If he or she uh, got the title of the prime minister, now, continuously doing things right, without mistake, as much as possible, sincerely, as he or she promised for the people, people will always support. You see, if he or she corrupted, doing things not right, then Natural fall down. It's not the mystery of the people, it's the mystery of the, the individual, you see. So, likewise, to become Buddha, we need all the session beings. Therefore, who cultivate this bodhicitta and practice this bodhicitta sincerely and becomes the Buddha. And who are not yet. Make sense? So this is a reality. As I mentioned, Buddhism is not as a religion, but it's the way how to free from suffering. It's the method to reject, a method how to do this. So we have to know this. It's not just a chanting mantra that I said, you know. Just say prayers. I'm practicing. Or just say, ah, so you are so nice. So it's not at the point. The point is doing the right thing. The cause, the conditions. Adopt the right cause, the right condition. See? So if there's no hatred, 
If there's no head, there cannot be development law. Because there's a head, hatred, which gives us suffering. Looking at that, so there is a love which gives you peace. So we choose the cause, love. See? So I cultivate, I generate loving kindness, compassion. Without the hatred in the society, we cannot develop love. Seeing the, uh, seeing the reality nature of the hatred, what it brings, suffering, how it disturbs your mind. Seeing that, then what we can do, we'll see. What's the alternative there? We develop hatred, anger, because there's somebody disturbs you. It may create obstacles to, to you to achieve that what you desire for. You develop that head out of loving for yourself, for your family. You love <coughs> yourself, you love your family, your friends, and you develop hatred. When there come some obstacles, you know? But then you look at this sea. Is this a solution to protect yourself, to protect then you see, oh, it's not. <coughs> see. So now there comes how really cultivate love, compassion. See. Make sense? This is very important. It makes sense or not, you see. If it doesn't make sense, just <coughs> accept. Just say, I disagree with you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we can discuss, you know. So, see, it's all interdependent, right or wrong. See, without the other, the, the, without the other left, the right cannot exist. So how to cultivate that now, loving kindness? Yes, of all sentient beings, you see. We cut the border. You know, we cut the limitation. You know, there's a, we, as a mission, we have a, a such kind of like a, a, the hate in the mind, the hatred in the mind, because we love somebody. We love ourselves. Then that shows our love and compassion is a limited one. There's a boundary. So to cut that boundary, to cut that limitation, there's a develop a broader idea, the notion of love and compassion. To all Make sense? Let's look at this now. It's the wise way because you have a wisdom to know this. That's what's called precious human life. Everyone has love and compassion for some extent, even animals. In their own reality. 
active state. But they don't have that kind of intelligence to go beyond. So human life has this kind of intelligence, mental power to capture you know, the broader meaning. So the enlightenment without truth is unlimited of compassion. It's unlimited wisdom. See. So that kind of uh, how to you know since our mind has that kind of limitless nature. So through this method. Exercise this way, step by step, step by step. Yeah. Uh, we can do this. This is not a matter of our interest or not interest. It's, this is a matter of knowing and then how to do it. Because since we desire for peace and happiness, since we desire to free from suffering, and we live our life, every day we make effort, work hard, see, doing things to bring peace and happiness, isn't it? To sort out some kind of how I can be free from this suffering. I don't like this, I don't like that. We have all those things. We are complaining, making all the effort, working hard. So, since that's the case, he is showing how wisely we can choose. How can do things more right? You know, see, everything is changing. So there's a say in the relative state. Then in that relative state, we're doing all those things. These all things are play of emptiness. So then, when we realize the emptiness. And it becomes inseparable. But sometimes emptiness is easier to understand. Oh, look at your mind, just empty. Your emotions come from nowhere, exist nowhere, just empty. No, but when you come to this kind of reality, this kind of causality is much harder to dig these kind of things, much harder. That's called the wisdom, knowing as it is and knowing everything. There's two wisdoms, you see. <coughs> knowing everything is much harder. Just look at the sky, it's just empty. It's easy to understand. So now the sky, the space, is the basis of all the manifestation of this, all the different planets. Stars, and galaxies, you know, all this, you no, know, there is much harder. So these in individual causes, conditions, how we have to, how we have to kind of see them, understand their, their reaction, their action. Are much harder to understand. Like say, virtue, non virtue, meritorious, non meritorious, what, what they mean? No. Why it makes virtue? Why it makes non virtue? 
to get those things. It's much harder to capture the meaning. So uh, here, so I generate loving kindness, compassion, and the supreme mind of enlightenment, Bodhicitta. So for the benefit of all sentient beings. So the practitioner becomes the Buddha. See, sentient beings still in the samsara, you know. Buddha Shakyamuni, he practiced this. And he attained Buddhahood. And he cultivated his mind looking at us. We are still in the samsara. <laughs> so when we practice this, then we are the one who we are the one who cultivate this mind can become Buddha. No matter how great Pakma masters come here, flying the sky on our head, you know, they cannot lift us. Say, you are in the samsara, I will throw you in the nirvana, you know? <laughs> so that's why we cultivate this mind. I have the precious human life. Mm. Oh, this means, this what this means, precious human life. How much this kind of say, opportunity is there, possibility is there. So we utilize this precious human life in the best way as long as we have this precious human life, as long as we have the Dharma teaching. Precious Dharma teaching. So this is what we now uh, say first, cut, first take refuge and cultivate Bodhicitta. Make sense? So this is the shows our the this estimation, the optimal goal. Sure, you have heard of one can attain Buddhahood in one lifetime, whether we can attain Buddhahood only in one lifetime or not, but we're making this goal to achieve that.
Shines with the measures and metal marks. This is expression of the Vajradara's physical excellent qualities. All the perfect state of the body. So this shows it's not just mere empty. From the emptiness manifest Vajradhara, expression of and all the excellent qualities. Then your speech, union of sound and emptiness. Sound. What the sound make, you know? What the sound is making. When, when, the, when you are making sound, this exists. This choir. If it is just here, then when you, when you make sound from here, where you can hear there, it's just wave. It's just all, all play. It's just emptiness. There's no substantial. So when you make a, a bell, so no, where does the sound exist? In the bell, in the hand, or inside that, you know, uh, which moves that, you know? The combination of all this make a sound. So it's nature, it's emptiness. Emptiness manifests as the sound when the causes and conditions there. So there's color, sound, say, union of sound to emptiness. So this is we to realize, need to understand this. Because our mind is so fixated and the, the, the perception, the perceived, is all of us just you know, so fixated. Then, you see, we are grasping at something real. When somebody says something, we feel so happy or so upset. It's all just an echo. If you go to the mountain, rocky mountain, a narrow rocky mountain, you shout, the echo will reflect. You just say, oh, you are so good, wonderful. The echo will say, you are so good, wonderful. And you say, you are so bad, ugly. And the echo will say, you are so bad, ugly. It's just an echo. And you know, as because. 
because you know it's an echo, so you don't you don't pay attention. You're neither attached nor hit because you know it's an echo. So through that, we should understand and practice all the words, sounds, and an echo. It doesn't mean there's no meaning. There's a, there's a meaning. Every each and every there's a distinctive meaning. At the same time, everything is just an echo. It's a reflection. Like reflection in the in the leg, the moon in the lake. It's all our mental reflection. That will bring us much happier. As mentioned, the meaning is to bring happiness, peace. See? That's the purpose, you see. That also not is reality nature. We're not making it at an echo, but we realize how as as it is as an echo. All the form you see is a reflection. Then, see, emptiness resonates with the divine melodies. Divine melodies, emptiness, and sound inseparable. Yet, it is source of all the wisdom. Always pleasant, a source of wisdom, peace. That's the, the body, speech. The third, your mind, unity of clarity and emptiness radiates with the true omniscient wisdom. See. So, Bajadara's wisdom mind. Something substantially, substantially exists. This is a clarity and emptiness. Because within that state of emptiness, Vajradhara has no limit to see the past, to see the future. There's no limit. Within that emptiness, the clarity is so precise, so clear. So the compassion and the wisdom manifest without any boundary. So the true wisdom is mentioned earlier, no? So that's the Vajradhara. When you visualize Vajradhara, see that nature. This is my root teacher. If you have many other teachers, if, if you have, if so, all just see as the Vajradhara. It's a skillful method. So we'll chat this once. Oh, 
So this means may I realize the total 